Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Sonia and on this channel we talk about health, lifestyle and travel. And today we are going to be talking about SunSafe. What is that term exactly? And of course, how do we implement it? So if you like learning things that are helpful in maintaining health, then you need to subscribe to my channel and definitely hit the thumbs up, which means that you like what you hear. So pretty easy, really. And of course, uh, references can be found in the description box below. So without further ado, let's get on with it. What is SunSafe? Well, SunSafe is what I term uh, things that you can put in place to make sure that you have a really nice time and can enjoy the outdoors and adventures and just being outside so that you can actually enjoy it and have a great time without experiencing anything untoward. So SunSafe for me is putting in measures. It's been about being prepared because Let's face it, nothing happens without being prepared or preparing for an event. You know, it's like if you go to a ball, you have to have a dress, you have to have shoes, guys have to have a suit or a tuxedo, the jewellery, the makeup, the hair. Oh, do you like my hair? This is what happens after weeks and weeks of stage four lockdown here in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. So I'm waiting to go to the hairdresser. I haven't been going to cut my hair, though I have cut my husband's. Yes, there is a difference. So I'm located in Australia where there is a high incidence of skin cancer. And this is attributable to the fact that there is a large proportion of fair-skinned population, as well as the proximity to the equator. So... Unfortunately, this means that we need to be, as an Australian, more careful or anything in the southern hemisphere, this end um, on the map, actually have to be more careful with choosing sunscreen. So what are the five things that need to be done to be sun safe? Well, number one is sunscreen. Now, the sunlight is made up of about 50% visible light, about 40% that is uh, infrared radiation, and 9% UV. And by applying a sunscreen prior to going out in the sunlight or in the sun, uh, usually about 20 minutes before, you help prevent your skin from the damaging effects of these rays. So if you're going out in the sun or out, outside, even if it's not sunny, there is still a UV index, then you need to apply sunscreen. It's said that it should be done 20 minutes before you go out. It should be reapplied if you swim, if you're heavily exercising, um, and definitely within two hours of the last application, so every two hours. So what type of sunscreen should you use? Well, that is entirely up to you. There are so many skin types. There are so many sunscreens that are geared towards different skin types, whether it be oily skin, um, whether you like a zinc in your, your particular sunscreen, whether you like a milky formulation, whether you like a spray-on formulation. Uh, as you can see on this particular bottle, it is a SPF 50. The 50 is in bigger font and you will find that on anything that has an SPF. This is a La Roche-Posay one. A smaller one, which I use under makeup, uh, it's great, it's milky, it doesn't shine and it's great for under makeup. This one I use at the beach, it's spray-on, it's easily to apply. But remember with spray-on things, of course, there can be areas that are missed because of that you know, fine sprays or so it's definitely about making sure that the product is spread equally all over the area that you're covering. And that is key to how much protection you will receive. So this one says 50 and what that 50 means, it is a sun protection factor or the SPF and it amounts to how many times your skin can actually handle the UV rays compared to bed skin. So 
that deter that depends on how much you put on. So when these um, go through their tests, sunscreens go through their tests, they're actually tested on actual people. <laughs> Fun fact. So and it actually is proposed that with two milligrams per square centimeter of skin, that will give you an SPF rating of 50 or 50 times protection compared to bare skin. However, if it's not applied in that ratio, then, you know, you might only be getting 30 times more or 15 times more. So actually, sunscreens are proven to be protective against both UVB and UVA uh, light. They're called broad spectrum and, you know, they're the ones that you want to purchase and apply. But how much sunscreen you actually apply depends on the protection you'll receive. And it said that adults should be applying something like 35 mils to protect at that or whatever number. So if it was 30 plus, it would still be 35 mils of the sunscreen applied to your body. 50, same amount. It needs to be that 2 milligrams per square meter. So that's something that I hope you've learned. So the second sun safe measure is your clothing. Now the great thing about clothes is that you don't have to reapply them like sunscreen. They are broad spectrum. However, you can't cover up everything. No matter if we're fully clothed, we still have often hands that are at the ends of our sleeves or, or, or t-shirts or it's our face, or it's our ears. So we still need to apply sunscreen to these areas. The other problem is that when you are hot, and then particularly if you're somewhere which is hot and humid, you don't actually want to wear clothes. You actually want to be able to take them off because it makes you feel cooler. So that's a bit of a problem as well. So UV protective clothing in Australia is rated similar to sunscreen with numbers. And you will find that these numbers are termed UPF, which means, any guesses there, ultraviolet protection factor. So UPF is ultraviolet protection factor, and it is scored or rated the same way as sunscreens. The UPF represents the factor by which the UV radiation exposure is reduced. So example, a garment with the UPF 50 allows 1 50th of UV radiation to pass through it. And these clothings range from UPF factors of 15 up to 50 plus. In Australia, UV protective clothing must meet the Australian 2020 standard which specifies that garments must be tested by an accredited lab and adhere to minimum body coverage requirements in order to display a UPF label. So you're not going to get in Australia a pair of bikinis which cover minimal with a UPF factor of 50. So a lot of fabrics don't actually protect from the sun and it depends on the material, color, weight, construction and thickness. It's been found that polyester is most is the most effective at reducing UPF compared to cotton, but it's so sweaty and sticky in summer that it's not a best material. So there are lots of formulations of you know, um, sweat resistant, sports, leisure wear, sun protection factor have all been incorporated to, together. It's actually a growing industry as we, you know, seek to wear clothes that can protect us but breathe, that don't smell, all those sorts of things. So let's look at the third thing, which is the third thing is sunglasses. So sunglasses are a great way of protecting our eyes from the sun and UV rays. So the Cancer Council in Australia recommend wearing close-fitting sunglasses. They recommend wrap-around glasses, but sometimes, you know, that's 
depends what you like to look like. Um, but sunglasses in Australia must meet the standards again. Um, we have very high standards here in Australia. And um, a close-fitting wraparound style recommended, but 40% of UV light will be filtered through your sunglasses. So that is the Australian standard for sunglasses. So the fourth thing that we can do to protect ourselves and, you know, as a measure, call ourselves sun safe is by having shade. Now, if you can find shade, that's great. But sometimes you just cannot find it on the beach or wherever you are. Um, so you have to bring it with you. And, you know, on the beach, it can be things like beach umbrellas, gazebos, little tents, all those sorts of things. However, if you are in the sun, another form of shade is obtained by wearing a peaked hat. I've got some hats up behind me. There's a peaked hat cap, there's a bucket hat, and there's a large hat over here. So it just depends what you have. Definitely if it's a windy day, you need something that's going to stay on. If you've got kids, you need something with a little bit of a you know, wrap around thing that's not going to blow off. Some kids hate hats. Teaching your children to wear hats early is very important. You don't want them taking it off or else they're not sun safe. Definitely little children um, should be, you know, you should be having shelter so that they can, uh, you know, once they've run around, had a swim or whatever, they can stay cool by being under shelter. Definitely, you know, particularly if you have pale skin children in particular, um, redheads are, are a prime suspect. Uh, I have a redhead granddaughter and, you know, she needs to be particularly careful whilst out in the sun. She's very pale skin, red hair, prone to burning, more so than others. So just being aware that, you know, you need to be putting hats on, making sure they stay on. Um, if you can't keep a hat on or you're out somewhere, one of the best things I've done or invested in is a UV rated umbrella and it's a collapsible one. It's great. I take it with me traveling overseas when I go um, or even here. It's great, you know, if it's a sunny day and you're walking somewhere, I put up the umbrella. It's sometimes nicer than having a hat that's hot on your head. And I walk with that. It keeps the sun off. It's great. It tucks down, you can pop it back into your handbag. If it rains, you've still got something that's going to keep the rain off you as well. So a great traveling accessory uh, to invest in is a UV rated collapsible umbrella. Just remember that. So built, natural or portable shades are all recommended for if you're going to be outside, in the outdoors, in the sun, whether you're having a picnic, whether you're having a beach day, wherever you can get shade. You know, if there's a nice big tree, have your picnic under that or shelter under that. Um, and also, you know, timing the times that you actually go out in the sun is also important. You know, we have a UV index there's apps that you can get on your phone that will tell you the UV index. You know, going out before the sun has its highest UV index is a smart thing to do. So there are things available that we can actually plan ahead and look at. If you've got kids, um, you know, you need to be timing or definitely making sure that you have shade during the hottest parts of the day or go earlier in the morning and make sure you're home for the hottest part of the day. So that's shade. Number five is water. Our body is made of 90% of water and we can dehydrate quite quickly, particularly if you're older or very young. So babies dehydrate quickly um, and so can small children. You know, they're out running outside, they're too busy playing, they don't take drinks. You are the adult, you are the parent, Make sure your kids have a drink before they go outside. Then while they're outside, every 20 minutes, they should be sipping or having some more water. And taking, um, you know, a thermos or a drink bottle 
down to the beach or on your picnic is so important. You should have water for each person. So whether you take a big esky full of water, ice water is a great way of refreshing. Put a touch of lemon juice in it or something like that is nice. Um, ice in it. Uh, take a cooler bag with nice cold fruit. And that way you can keep your sunscreen all nice and cool too. So when you apply it, it's like, ah, all those things are important for having uh, rehydrating. You know, sunstroke is easy to get. All you need to do is get sunburnt, too much sun and, you know, dehydration. And you end up with things like abdo pain, cramping, nausea, vomiting. And, you know, for smaller children and elderly, like I said earlier, this can actually um, end up being life-threatening. So by being sun safe, we're actually putting in measures so that we don't end up with heat stroke, sunstroke, melanoma, skin damage. It's so that we can have an enjoyable time on the day that we're out. And then if it's another day after, or if it's on our holidays, or if it's on an adventure, or if we have to go to work the next day, you know, we can actually function. We're not sore to touch. We don't have skin cells in trauma. And definitely we can um, have a great time. So just remember, sometimes it takes time to plan ahead. And by planning ahead, you can have a great time. I hope that's been informative for you. And definitely if you like information like this, subscribe. See ya. Bye.